Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. This is just going to be a quick guide on vampire crabs. I'm just going to go over sort of the basics for all of the types. Uh, there's a lot of different species, but the two main ones are the red devils and the standard purple crabs. So we'll go over the requirements for both of those and the rest of the crabs generally fit with inside that with a few little exceptions. So the first thing we need to talk about is minimum tank size and basic parameters for keeping the crab so the minimum you need really is a five gallon or 25 liters roughly 25 liters uh, the temperatures anywhere between 22 and 28 degrees Celsius or 71 and 82 degrees Fahrenheit you want to keep your pH around 7.5 to 8 the water needs to be more hard uh, the acidic level will uh, cause problems with their shell it'll basically eat it away uh, you want the KH between 0 and 10, the GH between 4 and 16. Uh, humidity, you want to keep around 75 or higher. Doesn't matter how high you go, but you don't really want to fall below 75. Uh, you can do that by keeping a lid on your tank. Obviously, you need to make sure you can still get air through. Uh, you want to keep nitrates in the water section below 20 parts per million. And obviously you need a lid because they're really good at getting out. Um, unfortunately, crabs only live for about two years and the babies grow really slow. So that's the basics on tank size. Uh, moving on to the environment. Uh, you want to go as heavily planted as you can fit into your space. You want to keep at least 80% of your tank as land and 20% water. You don't really need to go deep water because the crabs can't swim. They are really good climbers, so you need to make sure they can climb in and out of the water easily. If they can't, they will drown. So anywhere between, I don't know, two inches is fine for depth, uh, up to about 10 centimeters, just as long as the whole crab can fit under the water so none of it's exposed. Uh, they use the water to uh, shed their skins or molt. Uh, sandy substrates are the best in the water section. Um, for the land section, uh, you sort of want a dry or moist soil, a little bit of both if you can manage it. The crabs really like to burrow, so uh, don't compact it too much so they can actually dig a little bit. And avoid anything really rocky because they won't be able to dig otherwise. Um, I found bonsai soil works really good, um, organic obviously. And you can mix that with some coconut fiber or even some peat moss. Um, once you've got the basics like that set, uh, they're really good at climbing and they enjoy climbing. So if you can, you want to sort of build up as well. So sticks going to the top parts of your uh, tank, whatever you can sort of come up with, they'll pretty much use it. Uh, as well as that, you need a lot of hiding places on the ground because although people say the crabs are social, they're not really that social. They will fight and bully each other and rip claws and legs off, especially if you have more than one male. But the males even do this sometimes to females when they're mating. Um, tall plants work well, they'll climb up the leaves and the branches. Um, you need to do the same in the water section. Uh, aquatic plants are good, you need some rocks, some little burrows, whatever you can fit in there, but you still need enough room to be able to move around and enough space for them to shed their skin. You might find that your crabs don't use the water all that much. I have uh, two purples, two reds in separate tanks and a ton of babies and I find the red crabs don't really use the water that much. But it really depends on a lot of different things because the reds were in there quite often at the start. Uh, the crabs are pretty much nocturnal so if you don't see them during the day uh, don't freak out. You can just check on them at night once the light's been off for a couple of hours. Just head on over with a little torch and you'll see them roaming around. They do get more active during the day when they uh, get used to their environment. Um, if you're trying to figure out some plants to put in your tank, uh, I'll just put a little suggested plant idea list up on the screen. A lot of these are cheap indoor plants you can find anywhere. I'm not going to go through all the names, some of them are a bit hard to pronounce, but there's a ton here. Um, you can use whatever else you want. They don't really have any issues with eating them. Mine only eat sort of decaying parts of the plant have any issues they won't act actively eat any living plants 
Uh, moss is a major one. They love moss. So if you can get a lot of moss in there, that does great. Um, essentially, any plants you would find in a standard terrarium, they'll be suitable for these crabs. Um, in the aquatic section, uh, any aquarium plants work really well. Um, I have noticed that my crabs and a few other crabs I've seen online seem to quite like eating floating plants. Um, duckweed and salvinia are quite good. I watch mine eat them all the time. I have to top it up quite a lot because they do eat tons of it. They'll even drag it out of the water to all different places around the tank. Moving on to food, uh, they're pretty easy to feed. They're not really fussy. You just sprinkle a little bit of fish food around. Some nano fish pellets work really good. They just pick them up like little grains of sand and eat them. Just sprinkle them all around your tank and let them roam around looking for it. Um, the other things that work good are boiled nettle. That's boiled stinging nettle, boiled spinach, boiled beans, boiled peas, boiled corn, boiled zucchini, uh, fresh banana, any type of fish. Uh, I usually give them fresh fish. I haven't tried cooked fish. Um, shrimp or prawns, seafood works good. Uh, clams and snails. If you've got an overpopulated tank with snails, you can put them in live. They'll pick them out of their shells or you can crush them. They'll eat them as well. Uh, crickets are really good. They're quite interesting to watch them chase crickets around and crickets are quite cheap for live food. Um, basically any other smallish kind of bugs uh, if you have isopods in your tank, they do like to eat those, so they're a good addition. Plus, isopods are really handy to keep your tank clean. Uh, you can also introduce some worms into your tank. They also work really well. They'll just cruise around in the soil, and the crabs do catch them occasionally and pull them out. Even the baby crabs will do it. Co-inhabitants. So you can't really keep uh, too many different things in there. I've seen people keep geckos and stuff. They're okay because they're quick and they generally live above the crabs. Um, not 100% sure on all the cohabitants you could put in there, but the ones that work really well are springtails, isopods. These are essential basically. They're a good cleanup crew and you can get them quite easily. They also break down all the waste and leftover stuff in your tank so you don't constantly have to fish stuff out and they will keep any mold under control. The other really, really important thing is don't keep more than one type of crab together. So don't mix the species or the different varieties. So if you have all red devils, just stick to all red devils. And if you have purple crabs, just stick to purple crabs. The same goes with the tomato versions and all the other types. Just stick to the type you have. Unless you want to set up a separate tank for another one. That works well. Uh, you want to keep one male to two females and you don't want to keep more than three crabs per five gallon tank or 25 liters so one male two females per every five gallons more space the better um, in a five gallon they will make their own little uh, territories and they do kind of fight and battle it out occasionally if they start venturing around too far so you really do need a lot of hiding places for that okay so breeding the crabs yeah they breed pretty easily I've had both types of mine breed within the first month. Um, it's quite rough, so the male occasionally, when he goes to mate with the female, he'll flip it over on its back, and sometimes legs will come off, claws will come off, even the male will lose limbs. It's pretty normal, but if you do get a crab that's injured with too many missing limbs, you might have to separate it for a while. Uh, they do grow back, so it'll end up going into the water, shedding its shell after a month or two and it'll have all its limbs back. Um, some males are worse than others. I've heard of males killing the females during this process. It's a little bit of luck depending on what kind of crab you get. Generally once the female is pregnant she'll end up hiding. Usually spending a month or two in a burrow you won't really see it. So just sprinkle some food or whatever near the burrow to save her going wandering around and having a male attack her. Um, generally they will burrow for this, but I have seen them climb into trees for a while too. So this is where uh, soft substrate comes really handy. Um, generally when the female has the babies, it can have between 20 and 80, and they will usually go to the water section to do this, and they are cannibalistic. So you want to take the babies out or separate the parents as soon as possible, otherwise you will lose your crabs pretty quickly. 
they are very very tiny when they start out smaller than your pinky nail and your finger so less than a centimeter big and they are quite quick they're a little bit camouflaged but they grow really really slow I've got some babies here now they're a few months old and they would get destroyed by the adults already and they're starting to get some color now I think I've read that they take about six to eight months sometimes even a year to get to full size so they are slow considering the crabs only live for about two years and they generally hang around the water at the start so this is basically because they need to molt uh, shed their skin quite often so you need to make sure you're feeding them quite well with lots of calcium so the shrimp pellets and the fish food works really well for this uh, to begin the babies are quite social and hang around and get along with each other quite well in groups but as they get older they will start to look for territory and bully, bully around a little bit so you have to be careful and separate them if things get a bit rough the babies are even better climbers as well I've seen them climbing up the side of silicon in my tank so you definitely need to make sure you have a lid for that uh, for molting uh, I've read they can go generally once a month but that's quite quite a lot um, they will molt more often depending on how they have limbs or lose limbs I've had a crab molt uh, every month because he's lost a limb even a claw but another crab hasn't molted yet so it really depends on how they're growing their size and their limbs um, they'll always go into the water to do this so you need to make sure you've got plenty of space in the water and enough for the entire crab to go under uh, once they've molted they are really really soft so they need to hide straight away otherwise they can get killed quite easily so once they've molted don't try to get them out they may look sick because the color changes a little bit um, I've got a red devil and he looks really pale yellow sort of orange after he's molted but the color comes back after a couple of days I think it's about five or six days uh, as they get older too the color will fade a bit I've got quite an old crab here he's no longer red he's uh, quite quite orange but he's doing all right otherwise okay that's pretty much it um, if anyone else has anything to add to this make sure you drop it in the comments because there's not really a lot of great information around around about these crabs um, I'm curious to see some pics and stuff of other types of crabs as well because I hear there's a few hybrids getting around a mix between both um, I've got some babies that are mixed between the reds and the purples it was a bit of an accident when I first got them I mixed them which is technically a mistake but uh, the purple female got bred and I've got about 40 babies getting a little, little bit bigger now so I'll put some footage up of that anyway if you found that useful uh, don't forget to subscribe thanks for watching and if you want to check out my other channel they're linked below as well thanks for hanging around see you next time